would like to introduce uh, our speakers. It's uh, Ahmad Shabsi, who's a assistant professor at the Ohio State University. And we also have Jennifer Linehan, who is a uh, associate professor of urology and urologic oncology at the John Wayne Cancer Institute. Uh, thank you, Dr. Steinberg. Um, this is Ahmed Shabsik. It's an honor to be on the panel, and uh, thank you for Dr. Shami for the beautiful and nice uh, introduction um, summarizing epidemiology and symptoms of upper tract urethral carcinoma. In the next few minutes, I'm going to try to uh, just give an overview of the treatment options for this rare and sometimes difficult disease. Um, so in general, we can split the treatment for upper tract urethral carcinomas in three different categories. Number one is what I tend to call nephron sparing or conservative management. We try to save the entire kidney or part of the kidney and try to preserve kidney function as much as possible. And for that, we use the urethroscope technique that uh, Dr. Shami mentioned, and we try to ablate and destroy the tumor Sometimes we give chemotherapy or immunotherapy in the pelvis of the ureter. And in some cases, depending on the location of the tumor, we remove part of the ureter to get rid of the cancer. The second category of treatments is for more advanced disease, locally advanced disease. And in these cases, we have to remove the kidney and the ureter. And in some more metastatic disease and locally even more aggressive disease, we need to use chemotherapy. So how do we decide? How, how does your doctor decide what to do? Well, that depends on a lot of different factors. For example, the location of the tumor, is it in the pelvis of the kidney? Is it at the beginning of the ureter, at the bottom part of the ureter? Is it on one side? Is it on both sides, two, uh, both kidneys? Do you have one kidney or do you have more than, uh, do you have two, more than one tumor? Sometimes the pathologist, when we do a biopsy, will tell us that you have a high-grade disease or invasive disease, and that can push us to do more aggressive treatment to get rid of the cancer. Another factor is the number of times that the cancer came back. These cancers tend to come back after first treatment. And if this happens multiple times or the recurrence is high volume disease, sometimes we cannot do anything but take the kidney and the ureter out. And for some patients with uh, kidney uh, function, uh, you know, poor kidney function, we have to do conservative treatment to preserve kidney function and prevent the patient from um, moving to hemodialysis. So first, conservative treatments. So in general and in simple way, this is doing anything uh, that we are using anything that we have to achieve cancer control while preserving the kidney. And for that, we can do your troscopy, just like Dr. what Dr. Shami mentioned, we'll go with the scope all the way through the urethra all the way up. Or if that's not a good option, in some cases, we have to go the other way around where we actually make a small incision in the back and we go into the kidney and then we pass the scope all the way down from the kidney to the ureter and get to the, uh, to the tumor and try to ablate it with laser and other techniques. And if we are able to achieve that for patients with more aggressive disease, especially high grade and where we have to preserve the kidney, we can use chemotherapy or immunotherapy inside the renal pelvis and the ureter with some controversial results regarding this treatment. And finally, we can consider part of conservative treatment is to take part of the ureter, where this is actually a major operation. However, because we are preserving the kidney itself and taking part of the ureter, which is usually at the bottom of, uh, of uh, the ureter, if you have tumor at the bottom, you take it out and then you connect the ure ureter back to the bladder. And this way, we have the kidney preserved. To achieve control endoscopically with the ureteroscope, we use different techniques. We can use biopsy, we can use basket, we can use laser to ablate and burn the tumor, and we can use electricity. 
And in some cases, if we're going through the skin to the kidney, we can use an instrument called a resectoscope where we can resect and remove the tumor and preserve the kidney. So again, regarding segmental resection or trying to remove part of the ureter that is involved with cancer. This is usually preserved for very specific uh, situations. For example, if you, the tumor is at the bottom of the ureter, and in some cases, we do it for tumors in the middle. It's very rare to do it for tumors in the pelvis of the kidney. And again, we remove that part of the ureter, and they connect the, kidney, uh, the ureter back to the bladder. So after you do the first treatment, what do we have to do? Well, we have to follow up to make sure that the cancer doesn't come back. And for that, we use urine cytology, genetic testings of, your, uh, of the urine, and then we do your troscopy where we go up and look again in the kidney and the ureter using the ureteroscope. And that can be done mostly in the operative room under general anesthesia, and sometimes it can be done in the office. We also utilize the same imaging studies that we use for diagnosis of upper tract urethral carcinoma to rule out recurrence. So we use CT urograms, MRIs, and retrograde pyloureterogram. So when do we consider conservative therapy? Well, mostly for patients with low-grade disease, non-invasive disease, and low-volume disease and patients who have disease at the you know, lower part of the ureter. Sometimes, although it's rare, the disease can happen on both sides. And because we don't want to lose both kidneys, we do our best to do conservative treatment, at least the side where there's less aggressive disease. Some patients cannot tolerate major surgery to remove the kidney. And in these patients with a lot of medical problems, we also tend to do more conservative therapy similarly to patients who have poor kidney function. So one of the things that I get asked all the time, so doctor, you told me that I have two small tumors, you, you know, very small tumors, less than a quarter of an inch. Why do you have to take the entire kidney and ureter? Why can't you use a, ure a ureteroscope and destroy them? Well, that's related to the nature of the disease. The ureter has a very small, narrow lumen, and going up with the scope and being able to guarantee complete staging and accurate staging, in addition to the destruction of all the tumors, is not very reliable. So even though sometimes we have small tumors, we are pushed to do more aggressive treatment by removing the kidney and the ureter. For patients who are well-selected, doing conservative therapy achieve good cancer control, almost similar to the cancer control that we see for patients who had their kidney and ureter removed. So what about more aggressive disease if you have stage two or three upper tract urethral carcinoma? That's when we use radical surgery with or without chemotherapy. What does it mean for retinophorectomy? Well, that means removing the kidney, removing the entire ureter all the way to part of the bladder. In addition to that, sometimes we remove the lymph nodes around the ureter and the kidney to make sure that the disease did not spread to the lymph nodes and hopefully control the cancer. There are few ways we can do this. We can do open surgery where you have one incision that extends from the rib cage all the way down to the lower part of the abdomen, or it can be more than one incision. We can also use minimally invasive surgery, laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery, where you have smaller incisions. Of note, the robot doesn't do anything by itself. The surgeon is in control and uses the robot to in, put instrument inside the abdomen, and these are used to remove the kidney and the ureter and the lymph nodes. What should you expect after surgery? Well, it depends on the technique. Most patients will stay in the hospital for one to five days. Most of them will be able to eat the same day or the next day. Usually the surgeon will leave a catheter to drain the bladder and to give the bladder a chance to heal for a few days after surgery in addition to a drain. 
And I would say the vast majority of patients will go back to almost normal function without, within three to six weeks after radical nephroeurotrectomy. And finally, we'll talk about systemic chemotherapy. So patients who have metastatic upper tract urethral carcinoma usually need to get chemotherapy before surgery. And there are multiple studies that in the last few years that showed there is benefit to doing that before we remove the kidney. This is an analysis that combined two of the study that showed that giving chemotherapy prior to surgery is beneficial. And this is a, a, a follow-up chart also showing the same thing. Dr. Shropsky? Yes. Have, have there been any randomized studies to, to, to show that, or is this pre pretty much uh, looking at a number of smaller series and, and reviews? Dr. Steinberg is act uh, absolutely correct. So there are, as far as I know, no good randomized clinical trials showing the benefit of giving chemotherapy in advance. Um, this is the best we have right now, and hopefully in the near future, I know of one clinical trial that is looking at this. Uh, hopefully we'll have that in the next uh, couple of years. Um, so why chemotherapy? It may improve survival. Uh, if there is a locally advanced disease, sometimes giving the chemotherapy before removing the kidney can shrink the tumor and improve the chance of uh, resection. Uh, depends on the stage of the disease and if there is metastatic distant spread of the disease, uh, the chemotherapy can go between two to six months.